<laughs> so good morning, everyone. Um, Simon, Camilo, Lillian, Joe. Uh, I haven't met all of you in person, but it's a pleasure to be on this panel with you. And I'm here with my colleague, Katzlin Demeter, who um, it will sort of join me in the screen once I make my remarks, I think. Uh, and I invited Katzlin on purpose because she, on behalf of GFDRR, has been recently working on uh, making a similar effort to what Lillian has just done, but with the with a very GFDR uh, disaster risk reduction focus. So we'll hopefully get a chance to say um, something about that. Um, let's see, I, I participate in this panel partly on the condition that I talk a little bit about what we're doing in GFDRR along the lines of um, Lillian's uh, paper. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll start there rather than talking about housing or Haiti for the moment, my, my two loves. Um, <laughs> I've been working in the Global Facility for Disaster Reduction and Recovery for the last six months or so on um, two projects, both of which relate to this and I think kind of inform the, the discussion that we're having. Um, one is the D Disaster Recovery Framework Project, which is an effort between the EU, UNDP, BCPR, and GFDRR um, to develop both a sort of conceptual framework as well as eventually a guide for governments. And I, it's worth pointing out that um, that GFDRR, like the World Bank, is always sees its principal client as government. So that that's the lens we sort of look at the world through. Um, the, the idea is to uh, develop a guide for governments facing large-scale um, reconstruction, recovery reconstruction projects, um, and to offer some advice on the challenges that are typically confronted in four areas. Um, setting up the institutional um, uh, framework for recovery, not just the organizational setup, but also the legal and um, regulatory framework for carrying out a recovery program, number one. Number two, the process of defining policy um, for uh, and, and conducting the planning of a recovery program. Um, number three, the whole financial recovery finance aspect. Um, where is the money coming from? How are you going to program it? How are you going to monitor it? Uh, and ensure that it gets spent in an effective way. And the ambition there is to advise governments not only on how to program their own resources, but how to get some kind of oversight over how the other participants in the recovery program are spending their money, which at Haiti is a perfect example of where the government basically gave up on the donors and it created a kind of two parallel systems of expenditure, of programming and, and expenditure. Um, and number four is the whole area of, of uh, recovery program management and monitoring. So it's uh, an ambitious goal is to develop a, a guide that would provide some advice to governments on the challenges and pitfalls. In some ways, we're consolidating advice that the GFDRR and the bank tends to give to governments after a disaster on, on a somewhat ad hoc basis de depending on the disaster. Um, so we're hoping that'll be something useful. In that regard, we've been, and as input to this project, we've been also carrying out a series of case studies. And one of them, both country case studies and more topical case studies, and uh, Kathleen's project on looking at um, how building back better 
uh, was done was um, is one of the topical case studies where we've looked at, in fact, with EERI um, assisting us, we've looked at Sri Lanka and the New Zealand uh, recent recovery programs uh, in in Christchurch. So um, that's one thing that we're working on, sort of <coughs> to hopefully to address some of the issues that your paper, Lillian, brings up, which, believe me, we appreciate the effort and the kind of um, intellectual organization and, th and thought and reflection that writing something like this takes. <laughs> we really appreciate it because we're sort of in the midst of the same process. Um, at the same time, the GFDRR is um, contributing four uh, papers to the whole global assessment process for um, under the framework of the Hyogo Framework for Action. So this is, most of you probably are familiar with this, but the governments that are participating in the HFA uh, process where they're monitoring their performance in disaster risk uh, management along a whole set of indicators that um, are defined in the HFA. Um, the bank is using the data that the governments have submitted uh, in 2013. This is the third reporting period, I believe. Um, as well as their, their reports, which contain a lot of more subjective qualitative information and a call for papers um, to try to identify sort of what the cutting edge is in these, along the lines of these various indicators. The bank's developing four of the papers that will go into the global assessment report. I've been with, a, with uh, several other people working on the sole indicator in the whole set of HFA indicators that actually has to do with recovery. So the question, it's for, if you want to get really into the weeds, it's indicator 4.5 um, is the only indicator that asks whether in recovery or in the process of carrying out recovery reconstruction programs, can the government say that they've reduced disaster risk? Um, and there, between the GFDRR and the IRP, the International Recovery Platform, I, we're lobbying very heavily um, that when these indicators in the HFA are renewed in 2015, there should be much more emphasis on the, the moment of a recovery program or the approach to recovery that the government takes in general and the preparation that they make for those times when they might have to carry out a recovery program. Um, that kind of uh, magic opportunity to strengthen the um, focus of, of the HFA on recovery as a time when DRR should be attended to. Um, and it's uh, pretty surprising to see for those countries reporting into the, uh, with their indicators into the whole HFA process, how infrequently disaster risk reduction is actually a focus of the recovery program. And the arguments that we're making is, not only is this a time when people are very conscious of the need to do this, but you also tend to have extraordinary resources available. Um, the, uh, so, so these are, you know, these are important moments and in theory should advance the disaster risk reduction um, agenda at that time. So we've been working on those two things um, and uh, I just wanted to, you know, sort of put those on the table. We, in, the, in connection with the disaster recovery framework, we have an international advisory group and a technical working group. 
Um, Lillian, I think you saw that we sent out the announcement of this session to both of those, mm -hmm. which together are about 80 people. Um, so hopefully some of the 105 people who are participating came from that, uh, that group. There was quite a bit of interest in participating in the call. Um, beyond that, let me just make a couple of comments about the paper itself and the sort of philosophy of what I think we're trying to advance here by doing this type of analysis. Which, analysis which I think is incredibly valuable. Um, I too would, along with Joe, I think argue for getting rid of this phrase, but at least with respect to the disaster risk reduction theme that is often put forward in the context of this phrase, I would argue that we need to be much more precise about what we're doing, but I don't think that this phraseology uh, really helps us that much. Um, and I say that partly based on my experience in Haiti, where I think that the phraseology of building back better was used to mean whatever anyone wanted it to mean. And in some ways, I think it encapsulated the, um, the difficulty of donors um, doing good work in a post-disaster environment in several different ways, one of which was that it contributed to the over-promising that tends to go on. Um, and for any of you that know the action plan from Haiti. The action plan had four pillars. I don't know if I'll remember all four of them, but they basically all came under the umbrella of refondation, which is sort of the recreation of Haiti. And along social, economic, territorial, and I don't remember the fourth dimension. Um, institutional dimension. I mean, Recreating Haiti was probably the ultimate example of over-promising in a post-disaster environment. Um, I think uh, it also has contributed to this tendency where the donors say that they're coordinating because they're all using certain terminology in common when they're really not. And the, the, the aspect of the situation in Haiti that Lillian points out really well, I think that there was little ownership of the aid programming on the part of the government. And um, at the same time, knowing that, uh, what I would characterize as an wholly inadequate effort on the part of the donors, therefore, to either, to either sort of call the government on that and try to create some kind of common agenda, or in the absence of the government being willing to um, participate in that kind of harmonization, at a minimum the donors should have had a more um, harmonized approach, in my opinion. And so, I think that they kind of got away with not doing that by everyone saying they were doing Build Back Better, which was supposed to be some unique thing, uh, which in fact wasn't true. And sort of the flip side of that, I think, is that you can bend Build Back Better to be whatever you want it to be, so you can sort of justify whatever project you're doing as Build Back Better, and therefore that this very atomized project-based approach to reconstruction that the donors had um, could be justified by using the phrase of Build Back Better. So uh, um, Camille is cutting me off. But I think um, I, I am not in favor of this term. And I think that it's been, um, it's covered up a lot of bad behavior in post-disaster situations in some, in some ways. Um, 
but I would like to argue in favor of um, a, an effort um, to address these characteristics that I'm that I'm talking about, in in particular the tendency to overpromise and the risk of not seeing what the donors are doing as part of a larger reconstruction program that ideally is mm -hmm. defined uh, by the government. Um, uh, and I think that there's a lot of work that we can do in, on, on, in those areas. And lastly, that, that program, if it does nothing else, be used to reduce the the vulnerability of the population that's most affected. And even within that, what seems like a modest objective, there's a lot of things that can be done. And many of them are difficult to do in a post-disaster situation. However, I still think that that's a laudable goal and that there's a lot of work that um, could still be done to figure out how to do even that more modest uh, goal um, more effectively. And that's, I guess, from the part of GFDR, that's the argument that I would like to make, that if we substitute something for building back better, that's what it should be. Thank you very much.